So I'm here at the Nordic Film Days in Lübeck and with me today is Valdemar Johansson, the director of LAMP, which is showing here in the competition of narrative films. First of all, for our viewers who are not able to see the film right now, um, can you tell me in your own words what it's about? Uh, it's about sheep farmers and uh, that live very isolated and uh, how they deal with, you know, when a newborn comes into their life. And uh, I, I, I don't want to, you know, I usually don't tell people more than this because I, I feel that you, you should not watch uh, trailers or read anything about it before you see it in the cinema. I'm absolutely with you on that. Yeah. Um, you also wrote this story together with the acclaimed author Sjorn. Um, how did you come about? Or how, come how did that come about? I, I started, uh, uh, you know, making like a mood board book or you know reference book with a lot of paintings and photos and uh, and uh, my producers they introduced me to Sean and uh, I showed him this book and uh, after that we start meeting like a once a week for many years. You were just talking about that book, that sketchbook. Yeah. How do you have to imagine that? You're just writing? No, 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 it's uh, only images. Uh, yeah, it's just where I just some reference that I found uh, and also some drawings that I did and uh, you know, uh, of Ata and uh, yeah and nature and uh, yeah it's uh, just a lot of reference. Mm. The film premiered in Cannes um, this year and it was labeled by the US distributor A24 as a horror movie. I wouldn't agree on that because I think it's for me it's more like a drama set in a mythological Icelandic folklore. Mm. How did you see that? In which box would you put your film if you have to? I, when we start uh, working on it, then we were just... Uh, our plan was to uh, just make a film that uh, we, we just wanted to see and uh, felt that we had not seen. And uh, yeah, it's a very classical story with this one surrealist element. So, you know, it, it could be drama, it, it's a... Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I also think that uh, people that uh, are expecting a horror film, they will be very disappointed because, for me, it's a... Yeah, it's not a horror film. And I, I think uh, some films can be in uh, more than one genre. You worked with Noli Rapaz before on Ridley Scott's Prometheus, uh, where you worked in the special effects department. And I correct me if I'm wrong, but there you were responsible for the fog. Uh, we we were doing, you know, like uh, yeah, I, th I think we were doing a lot of fog and also uh, some uh, fake stones that, uh, you know, uh, when they were running, uh, then we were uh, throwing like fake stones. Uh, to them, we, yeah. And since there's a lot of fog in this movie, um, was it real or did you create it? Uh, we, most of it is real, you know. But do we also we had to create, uh, you know, in one scene, then we had to create the fog. Let's talk about Ada, the lamb. Huh? Um, how did you manage to make it look so realistic? Uh, you, I think it was because we were working with so amazing people, you know. Frederick North uh, from Chimney Pot and uh, Peter Hjort that was uh, he was with us on set and then we were working with uh, all these amazing uh, and you know we, because we had also like ten children four lambs and puppet so uh, when we are doing scenes with Arta then uh, <coughs> somehow it uh, came real because you you know, because it you you somehow melted it uh, together in your mind when we were doing it, and you did a perfect job, I have to say. Um, the farm where you shot the film it was somewhere in the northern part of Iceland. How did you find it? Uh, I had been looking for the right farm for so long time, and I was I had to, uh, yeah we drove around Iceland a few times and. Uh, I, because I had a very special farm in mind, and uh, I 
did a lot of drawing of it and uh, I even made it out of clay and I was sending photos of that to farmers and uh, and there were so many people helping us uh, trying to find the right farm and uh, my brother found this one and uh, yeah when we came there we saw that you know it was a very different from the farm that I wanted but somehow uh, the nature around it and uh, how isolated it was because we could almost shoot like 360 and out of every window and nobody had lived there for 20 years so yeah it was uh, the perfect location so no one lived there for 20 years uh, how much effort did you have to put into making it look like a real home a lot you know the art department did an amazing job and uh, yeah it, it <coughs> they it somehow felt like a real home for Maria and Ingvar and uh, yeah they spent so much time working on it. What I really liked about your film is that you seem to trust your audience. You don't explain everything, you don't show everything, uh, which gives the audience some room to puzzle it all together by themselves, um, what they've just seen. How important was that to you? It was very important and uh, uh, because you know for both me and Sean you know it was like that in the script and uh, usually you know like films that we like are films that uh, you somehow yeah you, you just take out of it what you think and uh, it's not explained so uh, for me that is more fun um, there's in the, the film there's always daylight. Um, did you shoot in the summer when, when there's only two hours of darkness in Iceland or? Yeah, you know, it's uh, almost daylight for, you know, 24 hours. So uh, we we just wanted to be like, make it how it is. And, uh, and we were also shooting uh, a lot of scenes after midnight. So uh, yeah, it, it, but it, it it somehow gets very like uh, it's I feel it's so scary you know when it's always bright because then you can see everything and everybody can see you so there's not much dialogue in the film um, and I had the impression that even without subtitles I might have understood the story since it's very much just told by looks and gestures how hard was that to realize? We we decided that from the beginning that we should have as little dialogue as possible, because uh, for us it's like a visual media, and uh, if you don't have to you know explain it with dialogue, then you know you should uh, not have it. And we were talking about it that maybe we had too much dialogue in the film. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh. Okay. Uh, when you now see the final film, is it exactly what you had in mind in the first place, or did it change over the course of the development? I, uh, it, yeah, it, it changed uh, because I, we were working with so great people and, you know, everybody brings so much to the film that uh, they just uh, make it better. So, you know, and I'm, I'm, yeah, you know, what, uh, how the colors and, uh, you know, all that is in the film, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with that. I'm always impressed how many wonderful films are coming from a country that has just as little residents as a small town in Germany. Um, what is so special about the Icelandic film community? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't know, you know, but uh, I, I, I think it's just like everywhere else. You know, it's, uh, but, uh, you know, Iceland is a very small country, but we, I, I think we make like eight films per year, so. That's a lot. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, it, it is needed, you know, because you, it, it's very important to see like films uh, on your languages, uh, yeah. and uh, so yeah, because we, you know, there are a lot of books coming out every year in Iceland, but uh, 
I, I would love if we could make like war films. I would love to see them uh. all. <laughs> until now, I, I can't rem remember having seen any, let's say, bad film by Eisen. They were always incredibly amazing. So That's great. So I'm always <laughs> looking forward to nice. this. Um, I always think that having a budget is mostly good for, for a film. But would you have done anything differently if you, if you had, let's say, an unlimited budget or endless time? Uh, I, I, I think it's also good to don't have uh, endless money, you know, because, uh, you know, uh, for example, we had, uh, in the beginning, we had, like, uh, planned, like, I can't remember how many shots with Ata. But you know, we knew that we have to uh, do like a fewer scenes. But all this uh, somehow made the story stronger. And uh, yeah, I, I think you know when you have to work with what you have, uh, you know, and then there is uh, a lot of good things that comes out of it. I'm absolutely with you on that. Yeah. What about the future? Is there anything you can already talk about? Any new projects? No, I, I, you know, we, we have been traveling now uh, on all these festivals, and uh, uh, so we 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 have not planned anything, and but hopefully uh, in the beginning of next year, you know, we can start working on something new. I'm really looking for, forward to that, and I can't wait to see the next film. Okay. Um, thank you very much for the interview. Good luck with the film, and much fun tonight with the screenings here in Zurich. Thank you so much. Thank you.